Chemistry 30. This is our sixth lesson in the thermochemistry unit. This is Hess's Law of Mathematical. In this lesson, we will review formation reactions, then we'll explore Hess's Law of Mathematical, how to perform Hess's Law of Mathematical, and we'll also look at enthalpy diagrams. Remember that a formation reaction is a reaction in which a compound is formed from its pure elements. The standard enthalpy of formation provides the change in energy if the reactants, the elements, started with zero energy or zero kilojoules. In our example, we can see the formation of one mole of liquid water. And this would yield an enthalpy change of negative 285.8 kilojoules. This value can be found in the data booklet. And this value is the change in energy corresponding to if the elements started with zero kilojoules of energy. Remember, this is a change in energy, so we have to have a reference point. So therefore, we give all elements a value of zero kilojoules or zero amount of energy. Hess's law mathematical. It states that the enthalpy change of any reaction is the difference between the standard molar heats of formation of the reactants and the products. Now, only the reaction equation and your Chemistry 30 data booklet is needed to calculate the delta H of any reaction. And we can do that by using Hess's Law mathematical equation, which is represented here. We can see that delta H is the enthalpy of our target reaction, the enthalpy change that we're looking for. It is going to be equal to the sum of the moles times the molar enthalpy of formation of the products minus the sum of the moles times the molar enthalpy of formation of the reactants. It's important to remember that Hess's law mathematical is always products minus reactants. Solving for the target reaction enthalpy change. Step number one, write a balanced equation for the reaction in which we're looking for the delta H. Step number two, from the table in our Chemistry 30 data booklet, determine the heats of formation of each substance in the chemical reaction. Remember, if there are elements, they are given a value of zero kilojoules. Step number three, multiply the enthalpy of formation of each substance by the amount of moles of each substance in the chemical reaction. And finally, solve for your delta H of the target reaction. And remember, it's always products minus reactants. And that brings us to example number one. Calculate the standard heat of combustion of ethane and draw an enthalpy diagram for this reaction. Pause the video and attempt this example. What is an enthalpy diagram, you might ask? Well, you're gonna have to wait until the next slide. But first, let's calculate the standard heat of combustion for ethane. First, we need a balanced chemical equation. And as you can see, we have a coefficient of two in front of ethane, a coefficient of seven in front of O2, a coefficient of four in front of CO2, and a coefficient of six in front of H2O gas. We can now use our Chemistry 30 data booklet to find the molar heats of formation of each substance in this chemical reaction. Negative 84.0 kilojoules per mole is the heat of formation of ethane. O2 is an element by itself, so it gets a value of zero. CO2 gas has 
a molar heat of formation of negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And H2O gas has a molar heat of formation of negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. Don't forget to use the value for water vapor, not liquid water. Now we can find the sum of the heats of formation of the reactants and the products. So as we can see, when we calculate our reactants, we are going to take the molar heat of formation of ethane and times it by the coefficient in front of the chemical equation, 2. And we'll also do that for oxygen, which is 0, times the coefficient of 7. We'll perform the same calculations for the products. So for CO2, we'll take the negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole and times it by the coefficient 4. And finally, for H2O gas, we'll take negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole and times it by the coefficient of 6. That will give us our sums of the heats of formation of both the reactants and the products. Now, we can just put those values into Hess's Law Mathematical. And that will be the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of the reactants. And if we perform this calculation, we should be left with a target delta H value of negative 2,856.8 kilojoules. That is the enthalpy change when we combust two moles of ethane. Now remember, this is considered an add and subtract calculation, so we are only concerned with decimal places. And since all of our values only had one decimal place, our end answer will have one decimal place. Now, obviously, we are going to have to exclude the zero kilojoules per mole, uh, and we're going to have to consider that a non-counted value. Well, that brings us to an enthalpy diagram, and it is extremely similar to a potential energy diagram. Well, the only difference is now the y-axis title is the delta H in kilojoules, and we are also showing the enthalpy of formation of the reactants and the products on the y-axis. So if we go back, and we take a look at the sum of the heat of formation of the reactants and the sum of heat of formation of the products, they are now represented on the y-axis here and here. And of course, we have our balanced chemical equation and our delta H uh, for this chemical reaction was negative 2,856.8 kilojoules. Example number two, determine the molar enthalpy of combustion for ethane from the calculated value in example number one. Pause the video and attempt this example. So we have provided you with the calculated value already as a delta H notation. If we're looking for the molar enthalpy of combustion, that is for a combustion reaction, which this reaction is a combustion reaction. Therefore, we just have to take delta H equals NH and take our delta H value from the chemical equation and divide it by the two moles in front of ethane. That will give us our molar enthalpy of combustion for ethane, negative 1,428.4 kilojoules per mole. Example number three, calculate the molar heat of formation for ethylene glycol given the following information. Pause the video and attempt this example. Okay, in this example, we can see that we have a balanced chemical equation and we also have the enthalpy change for this chemical equation. It's represented as a term in the equation on the product side so this must be a negative value representing an exothermic reaction. 
If a question asks you to find the molar heat of formation of a substance, I would first look in the Chemistry 30 data booklet. And unfortunately, you're going to realize that ethylene glycol is not there. So we will have to perform Hess's Law mathematical calculations. So we do have to input all of the heats of formation values of each substance in the chemical reaction. We are looking for the molar heat of formation of ethylene glycol here. We know that O2 is zero, and from our data booklets, we can see that CO2 gas is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole, and H2O gas is negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. We can then find the sum of the molar heats of formation of the products, and that would be our molar heat of formation of CO2 times the two moles, the coefficient in front of CO2, plus uh, the molar heat of formation of H2O gas times the coefficient of three in front of H2O, giving us a sum of negative 1,512.4 kilojoules. Now for our reactants, uh, we have O2, which is zero kilojoules per mole, so that will cancel out and will not equal anything. Uh, where our entire sum of heats of formation of the reactants will be equal to the molar heat of formation of ethylene glycol times one mole, the coefficient in front of ethylene glycol. We now have to rearrange Hess's law mathematical. It was originally uh, the delta H of the target equation equals the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of the reactants. We want to rearrange that to solve for the sum of the molar heats of formation of the reactants, which will be equal to the sum of the molar heats of formation of the products minus our delta H for our target equation. And remember, we do have that delta H for the target equation because it's provided in the chemical reaction. Don't forget that it's a negative value because it's on the products side. So now we have negative 1,512.4 kilojoules minus, brackets minus, 1,178.0 kilojoules. This will equal one mole times the molar heats of formation of ethylene glycol. Don't forget to divide it by the coefficient in front of ethylene glycol, which is one and ultimately will not change our end answer. Uh, but when we perform this calculation, we are left with the molar heat of formation of ethylene glycol is negative 334.4 kilojoules per mole. Again, this is considered an add and subtract calculation. So we are only concerned with decimal places and there was one decimal place going into the calculation, so our end answer will have one decimal place. Example number four. What is the enthalpy change of 3.76 grams of ethylene glycol if it is burned? Pause the video and attempt this example. This is just a standard potential energy change. So we'll use the equation delta H equals NH. We are looking for delta H, uh, so therefore we need to find the moles of ethylene glycol, uh, which we can take uh, the 3.76 grams and divide it by the molar mass of ethylene glycol, which is 62.08 grams per mole. We can then times it by the molar enthalpy of combustion for ethylene glycol, which will be negative 1,178.0 kilojoules divided by the one mole, the coefficient in front of ethylene glycol. Remember, since the energy was a term in the chemical equation on the product side, that means it's exothermic and the value will be negative. And if we perform this calculation, uh, we will be left with an enthalpy change of negative 71.3 kilojoules when 3.76 grams of ethylene glycol is burned. Three significant digits for our end answer because we started our calculation with three significant digits. Moving forward, 
we will explore activation energy.